Welcome back to the Director's Garage. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael. And today's episode is a Daily Double. Daily Double. Yep, it's a what's in the box double double. We're doing two items today for the price of one. The undercard is this item right here. This is the, something I purchased and I want to show it off. And then the main event is back here in this mystery box. It's a, it's a box inside of a bag sent to us by the fine folks at Linsoul. But first, let's do a couple of headlines. First up, I finally did hear from Manuel Arroyo. All of the headphones from the contest have now been sent out, but stay tuned. There will be more giveaways. I'm dedicated to paying it forward as a shameless yet sincere way of bringing added value to you, the dedicated viewers of this channel. <laughs> and it might be sooner than you think, so stick around. Next, I want to give a quick final word about the Focal Radiance from the last episode, the sound check. Now, after I dropped that episode on YouTube, we opened a discussion about ear pads in the comments below the video. And the one thing that came up was perhaps trying a, the idea of anyway, of trying a different ear pad with the Radiance. Now, it just so happens I had forgotten that I had purchased a bunch of extra ear pads when I bought the Utopia that you know I, I absolutely love. Now, the, the Utopia was purchased used and then in the age of COVID I thought well maybe a fresh pair of ear pads was the better way to go that said I changed out the ear pads on the radiance to the Duconis which are firmer and keep the headphone further away from your ears not only are they more comfortable because you don't have the plastic touch on the outside of your ears they also sharpened up the detail which I described as adequate but not impressive it got much better so I would say if you're considering a Radiance, one way, one thing that you want to consider investing in is a pair of Deconis, and you can thank me for that one later. Also note that in the Director's Garage Sale, which I put in the comments below the video, I'm selling off this guy, the, the Hugo 2, the Cord Hugo 2. Um, if you're in the market and you want one, this is a good example. There is a small, tiny nick right there, just a little pinpoint size nick. It came, it was like that when I got it, but uh, other than the nick in the, in the top cover here, uh, it's a perfect condition, it sounds great, and you'll get it for significantly less than the cost of a new one. Now one final thing, I have a new partnership announcement. Yep, we got another company interested in the director's garage, it's the folks at iFi. Now they contacted me and they're sending some gear my way to review. The cool thing is, is I didn't solicit iFi in any way, which means I can only attribute their interest in the director's garage to you and your subscriptions. So if you keep them coming, the bigger we can grow this audience together and the more product we will get to come our way. So you have only yourselves to thank and their first product is already sitting right over there on a, on a, a stack of other boxes because I'm behind, uh -oh. which is why we're doing two unboxings today. But in true Director's Garage fashion, iFi has not told me what they're sending me and I really don't know much about their lineup. I've seen some of their products and ads, like the, I remember specifically the Red Diablo, but that's pretty much all I know about iFi. So I'm thrilled to get a chance to hear what, they're, what they've been doing, there's too many companies out there for any one person to track, but I'm, I'm grateful that we're going to get the opportunity to show their gear off right here on the show. Now, first up in today's Double Double is this box right here. See that? I switched the line. I love doing that. This box right here is a backup to something that you see on the screen right now. It's kind of like Where's Waldo in video form. Any guesses what it is? I know, you can't hear me anyway, so let's just do it. This one cuts like a knife, and it feels so right. Did you get that one? Did you get that one? Brian Adams, 1983. I can tell you that this item is used. I can tell you that it is an old item. It is older than me, which means it's older than dirt. Here's the first level, ready? Green bubble wrap. Like that. And we get down to the, oh, this is it. This is the whole thing right here. You ready? You're gonna see it in a second. And, wow, look at this, look at this, look at this beauty. This is the Shure 55S microphone. Yes, the Shure 55S. 
This is a microphone that was built in 1954, this particular example. Uh, there's a date code on it or a serial number that's a 5424. It would probably be the 24th mic built back in 1954. And it says Sure Brothers Incorporated, Chicago, USA. I am a native Chicagoan, in case you haven't noticed from my stupid accent and uh, all of the Blues Brothers stuff I did. Uh, huge Chicagoan and uh, transplanted to LA. Now, I thought that this was the coolest mic ever. This was the coolest, well, next to the RCA 70. 7DX, which I love the tone of. Um, this microphone is most associated with Elvis on stage. It was a mic that Elvis used on stage, and and it's just an instant classic. And this one is ancient, which you know I appreciate that. Well, I bought this product because first it looks really cool and then second of all, I just wanted to hear what it sounds like. And uh, you know I'm stupid and curious. And then finally, you know, this ribbon mic is delicate and I may have to send it in at some point to get a refresh, just a tune up, nothing dramatic. And I thought that this mic would make a great replacement while it's gone. Yes, I have fancier microphones, no question. I have all kinds of stuff. But I'm kind of a vintage guy, you know, I collect records and this thing just sort of fits my style, you know, I love it. Now the Shure 55S is a dynamic, it works very much like a traditional speaker in reverse. Now it works very much like two other very famous classic Shure microphones, the SM57 and the SM58. This model was introduced in 19. 39 making this an 80 year old design how cool is that now the first original models of this were even larger they're about 40 percent larger and it was called the fathead model um, which was even cooler but the frequency response isn't quite as good they improved made a huge sound improvement when they came out with the s model in 54. I think it was 54. You always see artists holding it like this, like Elvis and talking into it. Is you like my Elvis? Um, and, and that's because this is a Unidyne uh, with a Y. It's, the, it's their kind of branding. But it, basically what it means is it's a unidirectional mic. And it was one of the very first ever made. Prior to this, microphones had captured sound in 360 degrees. This one only captures the sound from the front side of the mic. By the 1950s, this was the most used microphone in the world. And we're gonna go hear it right now. In fact, let me, I got an idea. Let's try this. I'm a little rusty. Let me try one more time. This is getting embarrassing. One more. So what do you think? Is this thing on? Let me know what you think of the sound in the comments below. Probably sounds a little bit on the tinny side, I would think, compared to the uh, to the DX, the RCA. The RCA is a ribbon. It's going to have a really beautiful, natural sound to it. And this one is more of a stage mic. It's, it's probably going to give you something a little more on the hollow side of things, I would think. But, you know, it was a fun purchase. And there were so many of these things made uh, that... They really haven't appreciated, like, say, that RCA has or other mics like the Neumann U47, which will run you upwards of $25,000 for a pristine copy. This one was a few hundred bucks, and it's just not much at all. But I just think it is it is really cool, even if you're giving up a little bit of the fidelity, maybe, uh, to, to enjoy it. So we'll stay with this mic as I go into the next What's in the Box. And this is a package here sent to me by Lillian Dang and the fine folks at Linsole. Now, Linsole.com is your hookup for the best of what the China market has to offer in IEMs, cables, and even some over-the-ear headphones. But the China market has really changed the IEM playing field. They have brought upper-tier sound down to an affordable price. And Linsole, Linsole is leading the way with brands like The Audio and Canera, and I am thrilled to have them as a partner. They were one of the very first brands, in fact, they were the first brand to step up, and I can't say thank you to them enough. I was good, she was hot, stealing everything she got. I was bold, but she was over the worst of it. Got that one? Come on, Chelsea Dagger, one of my 
favorite, favorite songs by the Fratellis. God, I love that band. Inside we've got tape and bubble wrap. I so get excited as we do these blind unboxings. I really have no idea what it is they sent us. They just, things show up and then you just kind of open it. And I'm like a kid, you know, at Christmas. It's like, what did I get? I have no idea. I think I'm getting down to something, but I don't want to give it. Oh, okay, ready? Oh, 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 oh. The Fee Audio Legacy 4. Yes, the Fee Audio Legacy 4. I don't know much about these. I don't think these are um, budget. Oh, there's a nice chart on here, though. They look kind of flat. But I, I, uh... I don't know much about these headphones. I'm sure there's, that means there's four uh, armatures in there or four, um, four different uh, drivers, types of drivers. Yeah, four drivers. It's got an eight millimeter dynamic driver, a Knowles balanced armature mid, that's a very good brand, customized BRC, balanced armatures in the treble. There's two of them. So it seems to me like it's gonna be a treble focus with a nice bass slam if I had to guess. But let's take in, let's see what we got here. The audio, and I, I'm assuming this is the audio, but it could be Thigh audio. But I, I think it's gonna be the audio. If you know for sure, like if you have a source, let me know. Try and be careful, this is a slidey offy boxy. A slidey offy boxy is the new technical industry accepted term for when the cover has to come off. I think we're down to it. Are you ready? And good suction on the box. Pwah! Oh, okay. Well, that's classy. Nice. I kind of like this. This is a, a nice, like, it's not hard shell. It's like a soft hard shell. A uh, nice form case. I love this, the style and the printing inside of this. This is fantastic. And ready, and pwah! Oh, 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 take a look at these. Wait a second. God, I mean, there's so much to take in at once. First of all, I totally appreciate that there's a smaller version of the exact same case inside, inside, the, uh, inside the box here. This is great. This is great here. And there's, oh, there's a gorgeous silver cable. Look at this. Man, oh man, oh man. This is a beautiful cable. This is a four into a two way weave on the cable. This is very effect audio like, maybe lacking a little bit of the feel of the uh, casing on the effect audio. Very nice and they're marked red and silver. So you can tell what the heck they are. They get huge props for this cable right out of the gate. This is a fantastic cable. Uh, then you have the sort of, this has been a trend lately in all IEMs is they've been going to a metal plate to, to mount all of their ear tips. I'm not, I gotta send these back, so I don't think I'm gonna be working with their ear tips just because I, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's disrespectful, I think, for me to put in ear tips into my, you know, waxy holes and, and then have to send them on somewhere else. Uh, the last, and then and then look at the prize. Now, I love, I call these things the prize, but take a look at them. They're, these are really, first of all, surprisingly small, but look how tiny these are. These are tiny little BBs. Uh, holding them up, to, I'm gonna go to the under, to the overhead, and there's kind of a creamy, pastel-y look about them. Uh, they look like swirled paint, maybe. Uh, and then there are two pin, which I appreciate. There's a sound hole right there. Kind of a swirl paint. These are really cool to look at and they're not obnoxious and loud, which I appreciate. They could be, they could have gone with a more obnoxious pattern and they didn't. So uh, let's put in some, let's pull out my box of chips. Okay, uh, before we go any further, let's just quickly, there's a, a an instruction manual, which just shows how to put them in. Uh, and there's some English language in here, which is good, because sometimes they don't do that. Uh, and then there's a guarantee, a warranty card. Uh, beyond that, there's nothing else in here other than the tips. This And this plate is mounted into this box. You can't take that out. Now, interesting on this. Okay, now what I just noticed is that there's a dip. There are two dip switches right here, one and two. 
and I don't know what they do. And they are on both headphones. So these do something, and I don't know what it is. I'll probably get into that in the sound check. Maybe it's a bass response, maybe it's a frequency response. Holly's coming in right now, but <laughs> hey, Holly. And they're a little loosey on the tips, so I'm going to go to a different tip. Okay, these are the Sedna's. Oh, this is better. Now I got a good seal. Okay, so we need a player. I'm gonna go with the tube setting off the bat. Very crunchy top end off the bat. Excellent imaging. I like what these are doing. They don't sound like they have a lot of bass though. There's a little bit of congestion going on in the mid-range on these. Uh, this is a very complex track, so let's go off the same album. Let's go to something a little more relaxed. This is one by U2. These are very top-end focused. Okay, there's a great sparkle on the top end of these. I do sense that there's a little bit of congestion going on. They don't have the speed of some of the other headphones, the IEMs I've heard. But they have full range and they're beautiful. I'm gonna go to something with a little bit of slam. This is Kiko. Okay, there is a sub bass present, there's no question. It's not elevated, but it's there. Because I am getting some slam out of these. Um, they're a little 64 audio ish in presentation, but very bright top end. But musical, I like these. I like these. I, I don't think they're the last name in detail. I think that they get congested, but um, the range is there. It's kind of a winning sound, V-shape. A little on the bright side. If you like a little more oomph in the treble, this is going to be a good headphone for you. Um, not my personal like preference overall, but it sounds pretty good. This would make a great shootout with like the Blessing 2 or the Moondrop Starfield. They sound really good. They're growing on me as I'm listening to them a little more. The tube probably helps them. Let's take the tube off and see what happens. So they focus up a little better. So not a bass head headphone, but it's got presence in the bass, which is a great thing. Um, I think that's fantastic. Let's go to something else. Oh, pop music. Very nice. Listen to Lord Royal. Oh, these are beautiful. These hook up with pop. Pop, hip hop, anything like that. Royals is an experience on these. This is fantastic. This song's hooking up. This is one of the best plays of Lord Royals I've ever heard. This is gorgeous. Okay. So I'm kind of conflicted because something about these say more like $200 range, like they're in the meze sort of area, but the, the sound is up there with the blessing. So it could push higher to 300 on these. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. They're just bright. If you, if you don't like a bright, crisp treble, these, these aren't gonna work for you, but. Southern Harmony Music Companion, Black Rose. Good crunch on the guitars. It just might be a little overemphasized for my taste. But there's a good presence there. It's got great imaging. Not as good on the rock because the bass isn't, it needs a little goosing, it needs a little presence. Yet it lights up with that Lord track, which I can't quite explain. But like a standard bass guitar is just kind of buried in the mix. Anyway. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. I mean, we'll leave something for a sound check later, of course, and maybe a shootout. This would be a fun set to do a shootout with. Now, um, my thoughts are, you know, if you, first of all, they're beautiful. I like that they're small. I like that they're comfortable. They, they fit my ear well. I had to go to a slightly larger ear tip 
which was unusual for me, but that's okay. Um, it worked, worked out. I got a nice seal. These things, uh, the base lights up on certain tracks, but it's not dominant. These tend to the tend into the brighter side. I will say that pop right off the bat caught my ear. Uh, the Lord track hooked up amazing with these headphones. I really it was a, quite an experience. Very impressed by that. The rock stuff was maybe not as good uh, because it, it just doesn't push those frequencies where there's where there's a, where there's a regular standard electric bass, and that's essential in rock music. I just I need that thump and I need that that bump in the in the bottom. So. <laughs> And if you're interested in what songs I was just listening to in that uh, first impression section, uh, you can go to my Instagram page at Director's Garage and uh, you can find out uh, all the info about the tracks that I was just playing. I'm going to jump onto the website right now of Lynn Soul. I'm going to be conservative and say 250 range. I don't think it's quite Moondrop blessing dusk so i think it's going to be somewhere between 250 and 350 195 dollars wow well that's quite a set for 195 dollars these impress and i would love to hear them against the starfield the moondrop starfield i think that that's something we should do uh for 100 dollars more this might be a worthy upgrade in price. Uh, I'm not sure it's gonna compete with the Blessing 2. The Blessing 2 seems to, uh, the Dusk version seems to extend very deep and give me that bass lift that I kind of look for. But there are things that I did here in this headphone that did impress me. I think you can ex safely expect a full sound check and a shootout as well. I can't thank Lin Soul enough for sending the the audio, thigh audio, they still haven't told me. Legacy 4 this way. Linsel's a joy to work with. I can't say enough about that company. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, I'd ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. We keep things kind of light around here in case you haven't noticed. We're not too rigid. We're not too crazy with graphs and charts and stuff. We just like to have some fun and share our thoughts about sound and music. It won't cost you much but a calorie to click the subscribe button with your finger there. So make sure you stay up to date on all that we're doing around at the director's garage. Now, next up, we have a few unboxing episodes. We're kind of hitting this string of unboxings. Uh, it's going to be unboxing month, maybe. What's in the box? Some of these are going to be blind. Some of these are going to be known. Uh, I have a headphone that I bought about a month ago when it first came out. That's coming up next. Uh, I've been busy with other products. I just, I just haven't been able to get to these. It's an over-ear headphone. It's getting a lot of buzz. Can't wait to unbox those and take a listen. I gotta admit, speaking of over-ear headphones, these Meze Empyreans are growing on me by the day. I hope this microphone is worth it and working. I'm getting levels, so I know that they're, I know it's good. I just kind of, you know, sorry, squirrel. Um, but I, I am listening to the Meze a lot. It continues to impress me and grow on me. These are easing their way into that sort of long-term area. I think I'm gonna have these for a while along with the Utopias. Now we have another Audio 46 unboxing coming up. Those folks always manage to send something exciting, thanks to Tony over there. And we have our first product from iFi, which sent over what, who knows what. It's gonna be another blind unboxing from them. I can't wait to check out what they're doing with their gear. I just know that they do amps and they don't do headphones. So that'll be an interesting, more of a techie review probably. And then I have this long, term uber project <laughs> that i have started on it's not close to finish yet but i have to I, i'm super excited to get to show that to you at some point probably in the month or two away category for those but we'll see we'll see what happens maybe i get to it sooner maybe it'll come together sooner but that's an uber project so we're on a roll here and i can't thank you guys enough for watching the channel you make it really worth my time to put these together and i hope you appreciate them give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's unboxing the blind unboxing of the the audio thigh audio legacy 4 by lynn soul give me a thumbs down if i just simply annoy the living hell out of you i understand i get it i'm an acquired taste i can't blame you either way i will see you guys before you know it <laughs>